Let's talk about the decay constant and how it relates to half-life. Let's say, for example, you're doing an experiment where you have a radioactive sample and a Geiger counter. And the Geiger counter measures the number of counts. And you record the number of counts as time goes on. So let's say in the beginning, you know, there's a lot of counts, but this, the sample has a short half-life. So quickly, the number of counts is decreasing. And it's not perfect because it's, uh, well, it's real data. But you can see that the form of the graph is an exponential. And then you, you put it in, your, uh, in some kind of program like graphical analysis and you, you fit it to a curve. And, you've, and you get something like this. And what you get is, uh, you know, y equals uh, some constant a e to the minus lambda x, because that's what's graphed on the x-axis. So to relate this, well, this is really the number of counts, because that's what we have on the y-axis, multiplied by the constant a, which you'll see is the starting amount of counts. And that's multiplied by the exponential function minus lambda times t, because t is graphed on the x-axis. Very good. So this is the function that fits this curve. But we have this funny thing, lambda. Well, lambda is defined as the decay constant. And you know, when lambda is big, well, that corresponds to a small half-life. And the half-life, I give the symbol th, so the time where half the substance is remaining. And you can also see that when lambda is small, so a small decay constant, well, that corresponds to a big half-life. Small decay constant means that this curve won't curve too much, which means that the number of counts is staying about the same. And that means that it'll take a long time for half the sample to be gone. Well, let's find the half-life from the decay constant. So find half-life from decay constant. Well, we can do that by using the function n equals n naught e to the minus lambda t. Well, when the number of counts is half the original, well, that by definition is at the half-life time. So then we can simply divide both sides by n naught, cancel, cancel, and we get one half equals e to the minus lambda times the half-life. And now what we'll do is we'll take log of both sides. Well, log of the exponential, that's just minus lambda t. And then on the other side, we have log of 1 half. Oh, let's go over here now. Well, log of 1 half, review your log rules, but that's just a negative log 2 equals minus lambda t. These guys both become positive. And now I have determined that, oops, I forgot my h here because we're talking about the half-life time the half-life time is equal to log of 2 divided by the decay constant. And if you want to put this in terms of a number, log of 2 is about 0 0.69. There you go. So that's how you go from decay constant to half-life and also a little bit about the meaning of both.